So, what's in common with a small child learning how to walk and an entrepreneur? Probably most of what they do, keep, they both keep failing, both keep falling down, getting back up again, falling down, getting back up again, falling down, etc. The biggest difference, I think, is the small child will eventually learn how to walk. The entrepreneur, on the other hand, well, will keep failing. And that's my topic for today. I'm going to be talking about my five favorite mistakes I've made as an entrepreneur uh, you can hopefully learn from and that I personally have hopefully learned from. Um, my name is Julius Haukkasalo. I come from Evermade, a digital agency based here in Helsinki. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, I have a design background, but I've basically done everything you can in a digital agency. Um, we basically started the company straight out of school in 2011. And I know what you're all thinking right now. No, that haircut is not my first mistake. It is a, it, 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 I'm not proud of that, but um, I, I have made a lot of worse mistakes in my life. Um, but basically, I've done everything you can in a, in a company from uh, layout design to concept design to server design, even front end. I've coded, I think, one WordPress site from start to finish. Uh, I've done sales. I've been the CEO for a couple of years. And that's where lies my first issue, my first mistake. And because I'm sort of a master of none or a jack of all trades, I kind of know a little bit about everything, which leads to a situation where I try to do everything by myself. And a couple of years ago, when I was still the CEO, I was basically handling most of our, our sales, probably 80% of our sales, while at the same time trying to do some icon design for a site. I was doing some layout design. I was running from meeting to meeting. Uh, I was uh, handling all the finances, scrubbing the toilets, <laughs> as, as all CEOs do. So I felt like I was this sort of squirrel trying to get to every single spot. And that was quite difficult, and I, I was fairly close to burnout at some point. And I realized that I do really need to learn how to delegate. And the thing with delegation, delegating is it's super easy to delegate things you don't like or not care about. But when you're an entrepreneur, you kind of do care about everything. So it is difficult to delegate anything in the company. Um, and I've tried to learn from that. And, and I've managed to find people to do what I used to do before. Um, and I try to give as much to others as, as possible. There's a quote by a person, somebody told me once, that 80%, if, if there's someone who can do 80% of what you do, just delegate. I'm a bit of a perfectionistic person myself, so I kind of struggle with the 80% idea, but I think that makes sense. Um, but if you do delegate, and when you do delegate, you have to take the good and the bad that comes with it. And here we get to my next mistake not allowing others to fail. And this is a very, very important one, and one that I struggle every single day today. I've personally learned from my mistakes more than I have from anything else. Uh, I think school was good, but being an entrepreneur just a year or two probably taught me a lot more than five years in, in a university. And if I do not allow others to fail, then how are they supposed to learn? If I try to help them, it comes from a good place. I want to make sure that everything is running smoothly and, and, and everybody knows what they're supposed to do and so on. But if I go and intervene and try to help people, they start to think that they are not good enough or they won't, I, I, I think that they won't be able to come up with the solution themselves. And where I learned this from was I, I'm a lucky father of two girls and... Um, when they learn to ho how to walk, and they learn how to eat, and they learn how to put their clothes on, I realized that at daycare or with my wife, they always did it really well. But with me, they would say, no, dad, I can't do it. I'm not good at, you know, I'm, I, I don't know how to put my clothes on. I don't know how to walk. I don't know how to do this. And I realized that is because I'm trying to help them all the time. It comes from a place of love, but I'm sort of trying too much to help them. So you sort of have to, you know, look the other way when they're about to hit a rock or, you, or they're about to, like, uh, collapse on the floor. And you just need to let them go. But then on the other hand, 
you also need to know when to intervene. When to, you know, when they're close to the cliff edge, maybe you sort of, sort of have to take something, do something, intervene. They're, they're about to fall down a set, a set of stairs. You need to take uh, action. And here we get to my third failure, which is probably one of the worst ones. And that is chickening out and avoiding and delaying conflict or negative issues. And this is a difficult one as well. So you're trying to allow others to fail and do their own thing. But then again, you need to make sure that that project is on time. You need to make sure that the client is happy. You need to make sure that if there's an, uh, feedback that needs to be given or critiques to someone, you need to take it and go for it uh, without delays and, 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 and so on. And the difficult part is to know and understand and look into yourself and see when am, when am I trying to let these people do their own thing? And when I'm just cowarding and avoiding and delaying the inevitable conflict. And there's a good few mis uh, mistakes that I've made in this sort of theme. Uh, the most difficult thing an entrepreneur or a manager can do is let someone go. And it is never an easy decision. But when it comes to avoiding a, a, a difficult situation, letting someone go is as difficult as it gets. And personally, sometimes I've let people stay at the company for a year too long. And at that point, there's been things happening with clients who's been uh, harmed by that, other employees, team members harmed by that, having to cover up or, or so on. And this is definitely one of the things that I've tried to learn, is to not avoid, not delay, and act when it's necessary. I don't want to be Donald Trump or anything, but sometimes you need to cut your losses. But delaying and avoiding conflict is also something that has led to my fourth mistake, which is a pretty favorite of mine. Uh, and that's something that probably anybody with a co corporate business card can relate to. And that has to do with the annoying paperwork and not doing my paperwork on time. So this dates back a few years, uh, back when I just started out as the CEO of the company. Um, back then we didn't have these nice apps that you can just take a picture of the receipt and everything is going fine and that goes to the account. We actually had to uh, send like paper receipts every single month to the accountant. And I mean, there's always stuff to do, so clients that you need to work with and so on. And you might sometimes try to push that back. And uh, I started out as a CEO and, and everything was running f fine. We had money in the bank, not that we would swim in it, but uh, we had a good like three month buffer, as, as you'd hope. Um, and a couple of weeks later, I get a mail, uh, a, a letter in the mail from the tax office, my favorite people. And that little letter says, Hey, Julius, uh, you're not going to be able to invoice anybody again because you're owing us some VATs. Oh, okay, let's handle the receipts and stuff and we'll be fine. From the past six months. And the nice bank account balance sort of went from that to a situation where we started to think about if we need to do some sort of other type of paperwork soon. And that took a ton out of myself and my, my own well-being, but I, I, I struggled through that with, my, with the help of my partners and, and, and uh, my colleagues. We managed to save the situation, everything went fine, uh, nobody you know, was harmed by that, no paychecks were, were late, and we, we sort of survived that. And a few years later, we're, we're all well off. Now we have all these nice apps that we can <laughs> scan the receipts right away and not get to this situation. But delaying the inevitable is something that you have to learn not to do. And from this situation where we had to struggle with the receipts and had to struggle with the situ situation and issue, um, that w that's where sort of the, the whole uh, issue with being an entrepreneur arises from is, is whatever happens, whether it's you, whether it's clients, whether it's projects, whether it's team members, it's all on you at the end of the day. It's you having the sleepless, sleepless nights wondering what you could do 
and what have you done wrong? And that can take a lot of uh, uh, sort of energy out of you. It can take its toll. And I, th I think many who have been entrepreneurs or are entrepreneurs can relate to this sort of constant uh, anxiety of the future. And, um, and that's where we get to my, my last fail and definitely my uh, biggest one. And that is not prioritizing my family or my personal well-being over everything else. Because at the end of the day, this is the most important thing that you can do. If you are not well, the company will probably not be well. The clients will probably not be well. Your family, your loved ones probably won't be well. So you need to focus your own personal well-being above every single other thing. Uh, as I said, I have two daughters now, and, and, and I think nobody in their deathbed ever said, you know, if only I had fixed that bug, or if only I had figured out the issue with that cash. And this is something that we should all understand and think about, is how much effort do we really want to put into this? At the end of the day, what's important to you? And we need to also understand that failure is fine. It's okay to make these mistakes. It's okay if, as long as we learn and as long as we sort of figure out how to do better. But we as adults are sometimes not that good at that. We're afraid of failure and we're afraid of making those mistakes. And I think we should all take a, little, take a bit of a, a page out of the book of these toddlers and these babies and these little kids learning to take their first steps and to eat their own food and just try new things and, and be open to failure. Because if, you know, we often put ourselves in these boxes where I can't do this or I'm not good enough or, or I'm just not that type of a person. But have you ever seen a child that sort of goes, you know, I think I'm just not the walking type. All of us walk here, so uh, I think nobody will crawl on the floor. So let's be more like little babies, less like boring adults, afraid of failure. And that's my talk for today. Thank you, everyone.